Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to uh, provide a few more steps on how to use the Moody Diagram. So why use the Moody Diagram? The Moody Diagram uh, gives us a rough estimate of our friction factor that we need in order to calculate our losses for both laminar and turbulent flows. It also provides an initial estimate of the friction factor that we can use to start our iteration process with the Colebrook equation. The Moody diagram is fast, there's no math involved, it's useful when designing the pipe network, it does require knowledge of the diameter. The diameter essentially drives the show because velocity is a function of diameter, relative roughness is a function of diameter, as well as Reynolds number. So this is the Moody diagram at first glance. So you'll notice a few things about the diagram. On the left axis, we have F, our friction factor. On the right axis, we have relative roughness. So relative roughness is our epsilon over diameter, where epsilon is a roughness term that is a function of pipe properties. So if your pipe is very smooth, okay, if your pipe is very, very smooth, but you see this beautiful line right here, then you can assume your epsilon is approximately zero, okay? If you have a very, very rough pipe, um, you could have an epsilon of 0 0.002 inches, for instance, or uh, 0 0.0003 meters. So it's usually in units of depth, okay? And those are all provided in a table for you. So on the right-hand side, yes, you'd have your relative roughness, um, which is, is going to be this roughness parameter divided by diameter. So this is actually going to be unitless. On the bottom axis, we have our Reynolds number, which is our density multiplied by velocity multiplied by diameter divided by our kinematic viscosity. So this are, these are the components of the Moody diagram, okay? Now I want you to really pay at careful attention to the axes here. Um, the X and Y axes are all on logarithmic scale. So you have to be careful and uh, carefully evaluate what each of these notches mean. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, a couple of examples of how to estimate the values of the notches. If you feel like you've got this and you don't need to watch this part, then feel free to go ahead. So each red notch represents a value uh, within the lower and upper limit shown in black. So here is an example where we have our Reynolds number, and this is our, our x-axis, and we have a 10 to the fifth power representing this black notch, and this black notch represents 2 times 10 to the fifth power, okay? So those are what each notch means. Now, what you want to do um, in order to interpret the range is I kind of zoom into the area, which I've shown here, Count the number of notches between the black upper and lower limits, and then calculate the increment. So the number of notches are, in this example, is going to be one and two. So you don't start here, you start at the next notch. So the, it's going to be one and two notches, the number of notches dividing the lower limit and the upper limit, okay? Then, so in this equation, you would subtract the upper limit, which is two times 10 to the five, minus the lower limit, which is 10 to the fifth, divided by the number of notches, which gives you 0 0.5 times 10 to the fifth, okay? So this notch, okay, so th the difference between this point and this point is 0 0.5 times 10 to the fifth, which means that this notch is 1.5 times 10 to the fifth, okay? That might have seemed obvious. Um, 
you know, you're breaking the notches in half. Just wanted to step you through the process, okay? Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a different example where it might not be so obvious. So in this particular example, we are looking at friction factor. So that's our left y-axis. We're ranging from 0 0.025, 0 0.0. Three. Okay, the number of notches in between, again, is one, two, three, four, five. So this is our example calculation, the upper limit minus the lower limit divided by the number of notches. So that means the increment here is equal to 0 0.001. So that means that the first notch above 0 0.025 is going to be 0 0.0. Two, six. So we can kind of fill in the notches here. So we have two, six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine, three. Do we see that? So that's how we would fill in the notches. Okay, let's walk through some examples. So how do we obtain the friction factor if we have uh, Reynolds number and the relative roughness? Or maybe we have to guess them. I'm going to walk you through a few examples. So first, let's start with the Reynolds number is equal to 10 to the fifth power. And then we're gonna say that our relative roughness is 0 0.02. So what you're going to do is you're going to, with your ruler and with your pencil, draw a straight line up from the Reynolds number, okay, value, all the way up. And then I want you to follow the black line for 0 0.02. And do you see how it curves? Follow the curve, okay? Now, where those two points intersect, okay, uh, what I want you to do is draw a straight line to the left and find your friction factor. So if you draw a straight line to the left, you found that it is approximately 0 0.025, okay? That's how you would read the Moody diagram. Pretty easy, right? Okay. Now let's say something a little more complicated. So let's start with the same Reynolds number, so 10 to the fifth, but in this case, we're gonna say our relative roughness is 0 0.0016. So you're actually going to be in between these ranges, here, this range here, okay? So you're not quite halfway point, you're a little above it, okay? Um, what you're going to do is stay equidistant from both lines at all times, and you're still going to follow the curve. So you can see I'm following the curve, and then you're going to, once, at that, once you intersect with your Reynolds number, you're going to draw again that straight line to the left, and you're going to get your friction factor, which is about 0 0.024. Okay? All right, so this just kind of walks you through uh, the steps. So the thick black lines are the values uh, given kind of here. And we're going to walk you through how to follow the curve. Um, so you, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a section line connecting the top and the bottom line. Um, the section line is perpendicular to the top and bottom lines. As you draw your midline, this line is also perpendicular to the section line, and this is how you follow the curve. As the curve narrows, you maintain relative different distance from the top and bottom lines. Um, so for example, if your relative roughness value is in the middle of two lines, your curve stays in the middle of the two lines. If your relative roughness value is closer to the top line than the bottom, you always stay about the same distance. You travel that distance, so stay a little closer to the top line than the bottom. Okay. Now, in this particular case, a lot of the times you're not gonna know uh, the diameter or you're not gonna know the velocity or th and things like that. So there's maybe something in the problem statement that's allowing you to assume that you have turbulent flow. So in this particular case, we're going to follow a relative roughness of 0 0.002 but we're going to assume that we have 
wholly turbulent flow. So you see this notched line in the middle of your Moody diagram. Okay, follow the wholly turbulent flow line downwards as you until you intersect your relative roughness uh, value. Once the lines intersect, you can draw a straight line down to your Reynolds number. And you can get the Reynolds number for the given relative roughness. You can start with iterating, you can get velocity, you can get diameter, um, and things like that. These are some extra problems for you uh, to practice on your own. Um, so I provide your relative roughness, your Reynolds number, and then the solved friction factor. So go ahead and give these a try and let me know how you do.